All right, welcome back. This time we're going to be learning how to do exposure blending inside GIMP. Exposure blending is no different to the high dynamic range or the HDR concept that we saw in the first edit where we were facing a bit of trouble because of the overblown highlights and then we had less shadows. But there, we tried to solve the whole issue with just one image and we saw that with the raw image, it was definitely possible. But I also want to show you that if you really want to take things to the next level, you can do that with the two different exposures. That means an underexposed image and or an image with the correct exposure for the shadows. For example, this is another shot from that same shoot of the resort that I was doing. And here, this is one of the exposures which is going to give us the highlights, okay? That means this part that you can see outside the balcony, the window, and we're also talking about the lights here, especially these two lights, okay? So this, in real estate photography terms, this is called as a window pull. That means if you, you should be able to see outside the rooms also, okay? The view outside is important, right? So that's called a window pull, so we will be able to achieve that. But then the problem is if I rely on this exposure, obviously the shadows here, are too dark so that's why you take another shot like this and that's for the shadows and we're going to merge these two shots because as you're going to see that even though this is a raw file that i've given you right you'll still find remember the golden principle i told you that it's easier to recover the shadows in the editing software but it's still very tough to pull down the highlights even though it might be a raw image so we'll first see that we'll just try to use this particular image to get a window pull and it's not going to happen Therefore, we need to blend it with this. So let's see how to do that in GIMP. So let's open up this particular raw image. First of all, we'll open up the overexposed one, okay, which I think is actually for some reason I'm not able to find this particular image. For some reason, GIMP has not really synced the new images that I put under this folder, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to directly go over the folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm first of all going to drop the overexposed image, which is number five here. If the numbers are different, don't worry. That can happen once I release the course. Maybe I change the numbers, but the, the brighter one, okay, out of these two. I'm just going to drop in this because I just want to show you first that even though we have the raw image, it may not be possible to recover the highlights like we did before. So again, it's going to open this inside dark table. I'll just... Close this whenever I can. And once I close this, uh, GIMP will open this. And remember, you will get that dialog box which says convert and it talks about the uh, converting the color profile. I didn't get that because you do get an option there which says don't show this dialog box again. You can click on that so that next time it just opens up directly and you don't get that irritating you know, window again and again. So I've already done that. That's why that didn't, it didn't pop, okay? So this is the image. This is a raw image. So let's just go to one of the tools here, like before, let's say shadow highlights. Try to recover this, okay? And just see. And you see it's not able to do that, even though it's a raw image, right? So not always will you be able to recover the highlights if they're so blown out. So this is where you need to blend in the exposure. So we're going to open up our second image, which is the underexposed one. I'm going to just drag it here. Sometimes when I drag it here on this area, it doesn't open up the image, okay? So I then, because I just did that, for some reason it didn't work. In that case, I just drag it here on this left where you see this. Again, this is also a raw image and therefore it's going to open up again in dark table. Let's just quickly close this. Right now, GIMP is going to open it. So technically, what we're basically doing here is nothing but blending different exposures, creating a high dynamic range HDR photograph. Now, GIMP doesn't have a dedicated function to do this. Like in Photoshop and Lightroom, you actually have a function which says HDR blend, where you can simply blend multiple exposures. But again, the funny part is this is actually done in a really amazing and easy way. It's almost a one-click method, which I'm going to show you right now, which is there in GIMP. So we've got our underexposed images to image here also because you can clearly see that we can see that 
window pull here. Now what we're going to do is take this underexposed image and drag it on top of the overexposed one. So like this and just drop it. And because the composition is the same between both the images, because I was on a tripod, it just automatically aligns it. So I can see here, dropped buffer, this is that, let's just call it underexposed. Okay, so that we just know, yeah, this is the dark one with the window details. And you can see if I just hide this, the only difference that should come should be in the, the tones because they both are aligned properly. That is one crucial aspect uh, that has to be done when you take the shot, okay? Because it's not easy to actually align images in GIMP. Like GIMP doesn't really have some kind of an auto alignment feature like Photoshop and uh, Lightroom, okay? Anyway, we've got this. Now just think of it like this. From this image, which is on top, we basically need this, the window thing, and maybe the details in the lights, right? Because if you see here, even the lights are just a bit blown out and maybe even this part here, okay? So what we can do now, think of it like this. We, if we wanted to do this completely manually, you should start to think, what are we gonna use? Remember, what do we do for localized things when we want certain things? We apply a layer mask. So just see, I can put a, what do you think? A white layer mask will be good or a black layer mask will be good. It'll be good if we hide this entire layer altogether and then just paint white on the areas that we want because the whiter areas are gonna be less. So it kind of makes sense to open a black layer mask, right? I can add this, take a paintbrush, use white color, as you can see white is selected here. And then I can just increase the size of the brush a bit. Then if I start painting here on the layer mask, you can see it's revealing. It's just gonna give us the window pull. In this case, the balcony pull actually. This will be the window pull. A uh, bit on the lights here and a bit on this, these areas, right? So, of course, this is one way out. We can do this to get the best of both the worlds. But problem with this is it took a bit of time. It's a bit manual. This is where I want to show you a really cool function in GIMP which is called as a luminosity mask. That's the technical term for it. GIMP calls it something different. But the point is with one click, we'll be able to get a much better and a more accurate mask. It'll be the same thing. What we've done here is just that GIMP will do it for us. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna delete this layer mask. Now, it's just a one click job. Again, go to this. Over here, you get a lot of options. We've used selection before in one of the videos. You also have this option which says grayscale copy of layer. So just see what happens when I open this kind of a layer mask. So I add, add. Now can you see something has come up here which is a bit gray, a bit white, a bit black. What is this? This, let me show you. If I just right click on this layer mask, if I say show layer mask, you can also click on that to actually see how the black and white layer mask looks, okay? That means how does this thumbnail actually look in full size? This is how it looks. This is nothing but GIMP actually painting white and black for you, just like we did a few moments back, but it's just doing it according to the tonal values in the image. So anything in the image that was too bright, it is painting it white because it was too bright. So think of it like this, it just automatically turns white. What does white do in a layer mask? It reveals things. That means anything that was bright in this particular shot is coming through from this particular layer because white reveals black conceals. Anything that was dark or in the mid-tone areas is black or near black or gray, it's kind of trying to hide it. And that's exactly what we want, right? Because we want the brighter areas like the lights, this and this. It's just that with one click, GIMP has painted this luminosity mask for you. It's called a luminosity mask because this mask has been painted according to the luminance levels, okay? Think of it like that, the brightness levels. Now, if you see before, so let me just on disable show layer mask, you get that look back and you can see now, this has done a much better job without us actually having to do anything. You still have manual control over it. So let's say I want more of the details coming out from these lights. I can always take my brush and paint, let's say more white on it, on this mask. So it's not like just because GIMP has given you this that you have to stick with this. You can also further paint on this if you want. So these areas, I'm just painting more of white so that this takes it completely from the top image. I don't want any of the bottom part to come when it comes to the lights, okay? And you can see, 
Now that we have this nice blend of two exposures, what we can do is we can again use that neat little trick, which is remember, if we are seeing something that we like, we can actually turn it into a new layer. So we just right click, use this trick before, new from visible, and we get this, both the things merged, stamped onto a brand new layer, and let's say we can call it merged. Don't even need to do that. But now the best part is now we can go ahead and do our stuff. So we can go to colors, shadow highlights. Now you will be able to see, it'll be able to recover those highlights much better. Why? Because that detail is now coming from another image. So what we are working with now is a blend of two images. So we have way more details to work with. Therefore, you'll be able to do this job. So I can even really go a bit loud and you can start to see the beautiful greens and these huts outside here. Similarly, I also have a lot of details in the shadows. I can increase the shadows and get the best of both the worlds. So instead of settling for what we started off with, with this bright exposure, get a nice shot which has a blend of both. Also, I like to use this trick often, not for all the things, but sometimes just for lights, because lights can be a bit of an issue. So let me just quickly show you before I end this video, there are two more images that we have. So let me just drag both of them on to GIMP here. And like I said, sometimes it doesn't work on that part. So just open it here. Okay. Now we have two, and this time these are just JPEG images. Just want to show you that it works on JPEG images also. So you've got this where the lights are good but underexposed. And oftentimes you want to see that the lights are going to get blown out, right? On the normal exposure. So no problem. Drag the underexposed image on top. Hopefully, if you've used a tripod like I did here, it's just going to align perfectly well, like this. Just a one click job. Open up grayscale copy of layer and just compare it with the original. Yeah, this time it's a much more subtle change, but can you see it really helps on those overblown lights. If you had a darker exposure than what I had, it would even be better. But just quickly wanted to show you that sometimes it can be used for small things also, and then you can use this as a base to work with things forward. So this is how exposure blending works in GIMP. I hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next edit.